Good morning. God bless you this morning. God keep you this morning. Thank you for tuning on me once again. Praise God. Well, good afternoon or good evening, whatever decide, whatever time you decide to tune on, rather. Um, I want to read out of Acts chapter 8. It talks about Philip preaches in Samaria and it also talks about persecution scatters the believers. Matter of fact, I'll make that my topic. Persecution scatters the believers. Acts chapter 8. I'm going to go ahead and start with verse... Um, Start with verse um verse one. It says a great wave of persecution begins that day, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except the apostles were scattered through the region of Judah and Samaria. Some devout men came and buried Stephen with great mourning, but Saul was going everywhere to destroy the church. He went from house to house, dragging uh, both men and women to throw them into prison. And then that verse talks about uh, Philip preaches in Samaria. Verse 4 says, But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. The crowd listened instantly to Philip, became, I mean, see, because they were. Eagles to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victim, and many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. A name, a man named Saint Simon, had been a scorcher there for many years. Amazing. Imagine the people of Samaria are claiming to be someone, you know, claiming to be someone great. Someone, it says, everyone from the least to the greatest of often, often spoke of him as a great one, the power of God. They listen. It says they listen closely to him because, it says, because for a long time he had atoned them with his magic. But now the people believe Philip Messiah of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following the Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the sign and great miracles. They were the miraculous Philip performed. And that's also in the book of uh, Acts chapter 13 and verse Six and um verse fourteen it says when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God Messiah, they sent Peter and John there as soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers who received the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon them. You know, upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given, when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered he offered them money to buy their he offered them money to buy this power. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, "May your money be." Destroy with you, thinking God's gift can be bought. You can have no parts in this, for your heart is not right with God. Come on, some preacher, you know, you're paying for this, you're paying for that. You know, every every time a preacher or a teacher or whatever, a man lays his hands on the, uh, these, you know, the people, the sanctuaries, whatever, you know, just people in general, you know, saying you're going to be healed, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, pay me this and pay me that. You know, that, wasn't, that, wasn't, that wasn't God's call for them to do. It's like it don't even work like that. It's wrong. You see, you can't have no part in this for your heart. is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you evil. He will forgive your evil. He will forgive your evil thoughts. For I can see that you are full of bitterness, jealousy, and ill, captured by, and hell captured by sin. And that's all from the book of Second Kings, chapter five, verse sixteen. Kind of mind a lot of things was going on in the world, you know. 
people, you know, believe in these pastors and believe in these preachers instead of believing and trusting God. You know, put all your trust, put all your money in this in this church and everything. It's like, and then you hear all this bad thing was going on and being misused and buying this and buying that. You worry about some people worry about what, what these preachers and teachers buying instead of focusing on what God has for them. Don't you worry about them. Don't you worry about what they have. Worry about what God has for you. Worry about what He told you to do. Whatever they're doing outside the world of line, the outside the line of the world of God, then you know they got to deal with God. God sees everything, and nothing don't last forever. God will cause some things to happen. He allows some stuff to happen too, you know. And you know, and sometimes God can just use folks to test you to see if you gonna still pass the test. As you preach the word, teach the word, but are you gonna really live by it? Are you really living by the word of God? Things happen. Things happen in life, you know. But you know, the devil's also busy too. And you're going to let the devil uh, have this bad influence with the devil, by the devil, because the devil doing something such as dancing in the church. I just said dancing in the church, for instance, you know, dancing the way you would dance on the streets, bringing all that junk in, in church, dancing all that, dropping like it's hot and shaking, and eating all the kind of stuff in the house of the Lord. You know, a lot of stuff going on, too. I know, I know, I know about it. You know, then it's preaching, cheese or whatever. They people looking at them, looking at them like, you know, they're lusting at their flesh, they're lusting, they, they liking what they see. You know, stuff come off the street, they bring all that junk inside the house of the Lord. You know, good and bad don't mix. You know, that shouldn't even be in the house of the Lord. And the priests and teachers shouldn't even allow it in their buildings when they come to that. Oh, well, God knows your heart. But no, you God knows your heart, but also, like, all at the same time, you're doing something inappropriate too. You know, you're making these bands want to be making these be being tempted by this man making these you know bands being attempted to try something all at the same time it's still wrong you know but god will be testing you see how strong are you are you are you the man that i first called you or are you the man that's gonna step out and you're in your old fleshy back way the way you used to be and not supposed to have to live y'all from you can go back in that you know way because you see something you know because everything look good man i'd be good and when you touch something you may not you know Touch something that don't even belong to in the first place. It can constrict. It, it can destroy you later on. You know, if you marry or single, it doesn't even matter. Especially when you, you know, especially when you marry. You already got a wife. You already uh, uh commit yourself with your life, uh, with your wife, and make these vows. And you go out and do other things with somebody else, brother. If it's somebody in church doing inappropriate stuff, you know, you are gonna step out of that and go to that. It's like, is it worth your family? Is it, is it, is it worth your life? Is it worth your happiness? You know, is it really worth it? You know, to see yourself locked up or something that could have been avoided a long time ago or something like that. I'm just making a point right now. But I'm just saying, are you going to follow, you're going to stick with the word, help somebody else, be a good example to somebody else continually on after, after years, after years, after days, after day, you know, preach with your teacher and follow and do it and, and, you know, do what God first told you to do and continue to keep on doing it. He didn't say stop out of order and step out of line to go do them unfleshly, them, them fleshy, worldly, uh, sinful things. Yes, you may have some sinful desire, but either do you have to do it? You know, that's why I'll say God knows your heart. You know, you can be have these sinful desires, but sometimes God's not going to let you do it when you got a stronghold of the word. And when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, be like, wow, do I want to waste my time, waste my life on that, waste my marriage on something that don't even mean nothing just, just for like, it's just for five minutes or just an hour. Are you going to waste your time on something that's worth nothing? You know, something you already have that you already, you know, put your, invest your money into or whatever you want to hire, you want to call it. You've been, you know, with that person year after year, you know, you know, and how it is, you know, and you're going to waste your time and take your chance to go mess up your family who the one you say you love. It's not even worth it to think about that. It's not even worth it. Think. Yes, these people doing things. Yes, they shaking. Yes, they doing it. Yes, they looking good, you know. But you have to make your mind, hey, is that worth it? You know, yeah, I see all this stuff every day. If I'm gonna, if I'm gonna step out my, step out of my, uh, uh step out of the line of God, step, step out, uh, out the line of God to go to that, when God already blessed me with a have, awesome, great, you know, and, and you know, if they ain't good, and you wanna go out to go do something else, that's what you know. The devil's busy. The devil, you, you just let the devil destroy you. And for the devil's out to do, kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he do, destroy you. Anyway, God bless you and God keep you. Thank you to me once again for each level. As one of you, the God just keep you strong. Keep a strong hold on you. Keep your mind strong. Keep your mind, keep your mind straight and, and, and focus. Focus, you know, there's always a tempted devil. all trying to tempt you to do something that's not of God all the time. You have to make your mind to be strong. Be strong for yourself.
Just keep saying that ain't nothing. That ain't, ain't nothing compared to what God has blessed me with. You have to keep that positive thought. Keep on, keep the good thoughts. Keep to stay on the positive road. Heavenly Father, pray for those who walk and God bless you. They got to keep it, Lord, leading God. You protect you going and going out. I pray, Lord, we're performing against you. Your prophet in Jesus' name. You can't do all things through Christ. What's in you? If you believe in Jesus' name, God bless you and God keep you. And by strength, you are healing. You are well in Jesus' name if you believe. God bless you and your family in Jesus' name. You are protected. I pray, Lord, God, God, is angels around you. Protect you going in and going out. With all whatever you're about to do, whatever you're about, wherever you're going. It don't even matter. I pray you are protected. In Jesus' name, do your do. Don't worry about the don't. In Jesus' name, I pray. Stay up, stay focused, meditate on the word day and night. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. So remember, God love you. So do I. Take care. Stay up in the name of Jesus. Amen. See you later next time. God say the same.